Hey guys and gals, Gregster Reviews here again and today thanks to Sergeant Danger Cow from BSN I've got a GTX 970 which I won in the competition and uh, I shall be reviewing it. So straight on with the specs it's the MSI GTX 970 Gaming Edition it comes with uh, 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory it's on a GM204 chip it's boost clocks are 1279 megahertz but the actual boosting clocks I've been getting are 1342 so that's uh, 63 megahertz over it comes with a 7010 megahertz memory clock 1664 cuticles it's DX12 ready it's equipped with two times dual link DVIs and one display port one HDMI for power you'll need one times eight pin and one times six pin not a lot of power supply needed a 450 watt PSU it's a 150 watt TDP and it comes with a three year warranty well that's the tech talk all out the way let's get on to some games for the review purposes I've been doing a mixture of uh, 1080p and 1440p just to see how well it copes the Witcher 3 we've got running here on almost ultra I've got uh, Geralt's hair on Hairworks but that's the only setting I've got otherwise it was quite low so I was trying to keep some decent frames but this is 1080p almost ultra and uh, as you can see sitting around the 50 frames 45 running very nicely causing no issues at all Slow now. Whoa. oh and while I think about it I better uh, tell you about the little giveaway I've got whilst we're watching this nice little uh, thunderstorm on the Witcher 3. Brian Burke from NVIDIA kindly sent me go, five go. game codes uh, two for the Witcher 3, one for Evolve, one for Lords of the Fallen and one for Dying Light and to be in with a chance of winning all you've got to do is subscribe and in the comments section put which game you'd like a chance of winning that way I can uh, do a random generator and pick from there and we'll pick the winners on we'll say Tuesday Tuesday evening thanks again to Nvidia and especially Brian Burke appreciate that so back to the 970 and I'm running this with a 3930k at 4.4 gigahertz a Rampage 4 formula motherboard x79 16 gigabytes of the Vexir memory, a 1200 watt G2 EVGA PSU, and it's all running nicely on my Asus ROG Swift monitor. I'm using MSI's Afterburner for the overlay and the overclocking when I do overclock, which you'll see a little later on. Everything's set nice and big so you can see it clearly. I don't normally have this running when I'm gaming because I do feel it sort of takes away from the experience but one of the first games I tested was The Witcher 3 and I've tested at 1440p left the settings on from my Titan X and it actually wasn't too bad it was coping very well so a bit of kudos there straight away for me I'm also trying not to give any spoilers away as I know people enjoy the games and they don't want it spoiled by watching my review of the 970 so I'm trying my hardest not to show anything that's going to spoil it for you guys. It is a fantastic game. If you haven't played it, play it. If you haven't got it, enter the competition. You never know, you might win. So, that's The Witcher 3 running at 1080p on the uh, MSI GTX 970 Gaming Edition card. And it plays very nicely. I was very, very impressed with it. I went a little bit old school fired up Tomb Raider it's always been a good benchmark and a good stress test for any GPU so I thought I'd just run the benchmark see how that gets on the standard clocks of uh, 1342 MHz this is running at 1440p with everything maxed out including the uh, ultra shadows which is the uh, extra bit you have to add on from the options and uh, again I was very impressed sitting around the sort of 50 to 60 frames per second mark temperatures are very good 
I can't hear the fan at all. I, that's one thing I will say about the fan, uh, the Twin Frozer fan. They've done a fantastic job MSI on this. And even when it's up to 50%, 60%, I just can't hear it. All my computer is water cooled except the card, of course. And uh, I couldn't hear it over the pump. Uh, nice quiet computer is what we all strive for, I guess. Well, I do. I can't stand to sit there with loads of noise going on. So, again, at 1440p, Lara Croft looking lovely as always. Some nice stress effects there. And good temps, 68 degrees centigrade. And an average of 61.5 frames per second. So, nothing, nothing bad there at all. So, next up, we've got Project Cars. Again, running this at 1440p. Everything maxed out. All that matters is the star. Good luck. Very, very impressed with this. I love this green, game. Green. It's one of those games that just looks fantastic, plays fantastic. Even for newbies like me who are not very good at racing games, you can get on very well with this. And the 970 just eats through it, chews it up and spits it out, and says thank you very much. Slightly Mad Studios and NVIDIA have done a fantastic job in optimising for NVIDIA graphics cards. Looks awesome, plays awesome, 1440p, no problem. OK then, that was Project Cars. And on to another one of my favourites, Shadow of Mordor, Middle Earth. We'll run the benchmark, max settings, again at 1440p. And we'll have a little look, see what the frames are for that. I will say I've played this quite a bit actually on the uh, 970. There was a little talk about people seeing stutter in it, and I've seen none at all. It's been fluid, absolutely fluid, with everything maxed out. There's one thing I am quite susceptible to is uh, stutter. I, I would notice it if, if it's there, and I just haven't noticed any. So, again, massive plus for the 970 it's 4 gigabytes it, it copes very well in all the games I've tested I'm genuinely uh, a fan of massive graphics I do like the graphics playability is most important but if it's playable and it's got great graphics then I'm very happy and I generally go for top of the line cards so I wouldn't normally consider a card like a GTX 970 but after having it in my system now for a couple of days I can honestly say uh, that might change my mind up a little when, the, when I compare it to the Titan X it, it does a fantastic job no issues whatsoever right well that's the benchmark almost over we'll have a look at the average frames and they are 50 frames per second very playable just to show uh, it's not all about the benchmarks it's about gameplay as well I thought I'd uh, show a bit of the game and as you can see absolutely smooth as butter no stuttering whatsoever in the time I did play it I didn't get any stuttering at all looks gorgeous plays gorgeous again the 970 sitting about 48 49 frames per second but with the G-Sync monitor at 1440p don't forget it's uh, very smooth I can't pick out any faults in fact all the games I tested are smoother than Barry White and Lionel Richie in a sing-off competition yeah I think I'll skip the jokes again if we look at the temps we see they're sitting 68, 69 degrees centigrade. Again, I can't hear the fans at all. Extremely quiet. So, Shadow of Mordor, everything maxed out. On a G-Sync monitor, absolutely stunning. On to another big release of recent times is uh, Grand Theft Auto 5. Long awaited. Playing this at 1080p. Everything maxed out, including NVIDIA's PCSS. Looks very good. Shame my driving wasn't very good. 
again, if we look at the temps of the uh, GTX 970, it's sitting around 66 degrees centigrade. There's no overclocks on the card at all. It's uh, all a stock. So quite a nice boost there, actually, uh, 1342 megahertz. When you look on the uh, websites to purchase the card, you'll see uh, this particular card. It has a uh, reported boost clock of 1279 megahertz. So uh, 62 or 63 megahertz over that. That's a nice little bonus. This is uh, another one of those games that's optimised well for NVIDIA cards. Graphics look very good. Rockstar done a very good job. I was uh, slightly apprehensive after what they did with Grand Theft Auto 4. I was a little bit worried they're going to do the same, but they didn't. They delivered this time, and uh, well done to them. Gave us a great game, very playable. Lots of people playing it online, and I'm sure lots of people playing online with a GTX 970. Another thing worth considering is I'm not an actual reviewer. I do this for fun, nobody pays me. I have uh, no onus to give anyone great credit for, for something. If something doesn't perform well, I'll, I'll tell you as it is. But honestly, I c I <laughs> I'm blown away. I just can't pick any faults with the 970. Uh, all the talk about the, the VRAM gate, not seen any of that. It's it's just been a marvellous card. Coping well with everything. Obviously, uh, you've got to be realistic if you want to max everything out of 1440p. That's not going to happen always. You know, newer games like The Witcher 3, they're going to require you to turn settings down if you want to play at 1440p. But 1080p, it's, it's just breezing through it. It's one of the talking points is uh, 4 gigabytes of VRAM, 1440p or even 1080p, I've seen it said, is, is not enough. Now, I couldn't disagree more. It's uh, it's coped well with everything I've chucked at it. If I can't max the settings to get playable frames, then, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> what can you say? If I'm going over the VRAM, there's no way I'm going to have playable, playable frame rates, so uh, you'd have to lower settings anyway, which in turn lowers the VRAM. So, for us, anyone who's buying a single card, playing at 1440p I'd have absolutely no problems at all recommending a GTX 970 right up next we've got Assassin's Creed Unity just thought I'd give a quick demonstration of this game how smooth it is that was another one of those games that got mentioned in the uh, VRAM debacle again you can see this is uh, nice and smooth I didn't play this too long to be honest, I uh, had about an hour, maybe an hour and a half on it, just running around the city. I've done all the quests so uh, there's little point in spending too much time to be honest. But I found no issues at all, it ran very nicely, looks very good. Playing at 1080p, got everything maxed out, bar a couple of little bits, it was uh, uh, quite tough on the car but it looks fantastic as you can see. No problems at all, no stutter. And let's be honest, there's nothing worse than playing a game and it's stuttering everywhere. I've had it, I hated it, so I'm quick to pick it up when it is there. But I can honestly say I haven't seen any. As you can see, everything's nice and fluid, nice and smooth, no problems at all. Okay, next up on the list we've got Dirt Rally. A massively playable game, extremely hard. It's one of the hardest uh, racing games I've ever had to play. I'm, I'm really bad. I did manage to finish third once, but I was quite chuffed with that actually. Yeah. But again, on the 970, you can see uh, sitting around 40, 41 frames per second, but very smooth at that. No problems at all. Temps again, very good. And uh, yeah, great game. On quite an older engine, I believe, but still. Uh, Looks looks amazing. Great work, Codemasters. Right, well that's enough about the games. You can see clearly how smooth they are. I thought I'd go on to a bit of overclocking. I put everything up max, put the uh, voltage to plus 82, and just went for a nice simple overclock of plus 155 megahertz on the core, and plus 233, uh, 253 sorry, on the uh, memory which gave uh, effective clocks of 
15, 22 megahertz core and uh, 3758 megahertz memory. Depending on the resolution, depending on the uh, kind of boost difference it made, but with Tomb Raider, it went from uh, 61.5 frames per second average on the stock clocks to 68.4 average, which is a 11% boost. That's a nice free boost. There was no crashing at all with these clocks. I could have gone higher. I didn't bother. I was quite happy with that. So left it at that for that. At 1080p, it gave a 17% boost. There was a quite a bit of difference there. So. Uh, yeah, for 1080p it's a lovely little boost and uh, still a nice 11% boost at 1440p. And just because I'm a Batman fan, love the, the Batman series and super excited to see Batman Arkham Knight coming out next month. I thought I'd run the uh, benchmark here with the overclock as well. And again, uh, my averages went from 39 to 43, which is not very much still a tough game and I've got all the physics effects on as you can see which uh, can be a little bit of a drain but I like to have them and at 43 on the G-Sync Swift monitor it's very playable and that gave me a grand total of a 10% boost at 1080p it was 14% boost so again depending on what kind of screen you've got you'll see different results temperature wise it didn't make much difference at all really uh, still sitting at 68 degrees centigrade my ambience uh, 21 degrees centigrade if the summer ever does come to the UK uh, we want to keep our graphics cards cool also we don't want ourselves melting with the heat coming out of the case so uh, you want a nice cool chip which is uh, the GM204 is a nice cool chip there's not much heat coming out the top of my case at all in the whole time I was gaming the uh, Twin Frozer fan does a fantastic job anyway, keeping the, keeping the chip nice and cool. Right, well, uh, we're coming near to the end of the review. I've uh, covered all the bases, the temperatures, the, uh, the clocks, the boost clocks, the overclocking, and uh, I'm absolutely blown away by it. For such a cheap card, it's, uh, it does a fantastic job. Doesn't struggle in anything at 1080p. 1440p you have to be a bit more realistic of course but uh, to give it a marks out of 10 I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 a lot of the retailers are doing two free games which include The Witcher 3 and uh, Batman Arkham Knight so you'll all be ready for that well worth the money right well that's your lot quite a long review but thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you again soon